um, I will treat that as a good to go. Now what I'm going to do really quickly is show you the way that I think about this and then hopefully your curve and mind matches up um, and that neither of us have made any silly mistakes. So let's have a look. You can see what I've done is I've taken the equation of the curve that we're going to graph and I've just rearranged it slightly to make it clear what the two transformations are that have taken place. Um, let's do them in reverse order because um, the one that we just looked at most recently up above is about reflection. So you can see over here I have this minus sign attached to the x. That means I'm going to have the normal exponential curve but backwards, so it's left to right, which means in my head, I don't actually draw this because I'm familiar enough with this, but in my own head, um, I have this picture appearing in my head, roughly speaking. This is not the actual graph, of course, but it means I've got the overall shape. Remember, that's the first thing I need to watch for, right? Um, so that's going to be part of my shape. And then secondly, over here on the left hand side, this minus one, what it really attaches to is the y, that's where it belongs, and so there's a change happening vertically. Um, it's going to be a change, it's going to shift one unit upward. Okay, now that's very important for all of our different features that we need, right? Our intercept, our asymptote, our point per scale, all of them are going to move up along with this vertical translation, okay? So what I'm going to start do now, starting to do now, is to think about some information and put them on uh, in that order. I might as well start with the intercept, right? So when I'm working out the intercept here, um, I would say I'm looking for a y-intercept first. So I let x equal zero. So therefore, I get y equals three to the power of zero plus one. So it's one plus one, which equals two. That makes sense. We normally get a y-intercept of 1, so I've been moved upwards, so I'm going to place it at 2. So let's go ahead. Actually, I'm not, I'm not actually going to put it on there just yet. I don't want to um, make my scale locked in until I know the things I'm going to put on there because um, you can get yourself in some trouble with exponential curves if you realize you put like 2 somewhere. If you put 2 here and then suddenly you need your point for scale somewhere very high and you're like, oh no, I don't have enough space on my Cartesian plane left, okay? So I'm just going to file that away. I will, um, I'll just highlight it over here. There's my y-intercept, okay? Um, my asymptote, where is that going to be? Well, my asymptote is usually at x equals, sorry, y equals zero. Normally getting a horizontal asymptote here at y equals zero, which is the x-axis. But we just said in orange up here, I've had a vertical translation, right? So along with the graph, the asymptote also moves up one unit. So instead of being at y equals zero, it's going to be at y equals one. So I'm going to highlight that as well. And again, I'm just keeping that in my mind because I don't want to draw anything on until um, I know where everything's going to fit. Lastly, let's go ahead and work out a point for scale. Like I said, x equals 1 is a pretty uh, nice value to select. If I go x equals 1, I'm going to get y equals, let's see here, 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 1. Remember your negative indices here, this is a third plus 1. So this is 1 and a third. Hmm. Have a think about this. This is actually beneath our y-intercept over here, but that should make sense because remember from the first time I did a rough sketch here, it's a decay situation, right? So that's why this thing is going lower. Okay, so now that I know where my graph is going to head, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, actually place some of these pieces of information on here. So I'm going to put, so that I can get my scale decent, I'm going to put my y-intercept there at 2. Now that I know that's 2, then 1 will be here, which means 1 and a third will be about, looks to me like there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, 1 and a third. So when I find an x value for that, it's going to go across uh, to the right. Okay, so I also have one last thing, which is my y asymptote, my horizontal asymptote, I should say, which is going to go through that 1, which I labeled before. So I'm going to draw my horizontal dotted line here. Label it as so, y equals 1, and now I'm ready. Okay, let's go ahead and put in our curve, like so. Drew my lines across, and this point here, 1 and a third, collides with there. So remember, that's what I uh, got from x equals 1, so therefore I'm going to put those coordinates as 1, comma, 1 and a third. I've got my shape overall right, I've got my intercept, got my asymptote, and my point for scale I'm finished, okay? Let's quickly do this one together. Um, again, let's have a look at all of the different features here. I'm gonna do this one live with you. Maybe you can work it out alongside me. I'm gonna go y minus five from both sides so that I can show that the five is really interacting with the y. It's a, as we saw before, this is gonna be a vertical shift or a vertical translation. 
the graph is going to be five units higher than it would have been if it didn't have that minus five. And then you can see over here on the right hand side, let's go back to orange again. There's actually two things happening here, um, which is a bit sneaky. So number one, you can see that minus sign. That means there's going to be a reflection. Oh, that's actually cheeky of me. Does that really belong there? I actually think the minus sign belongs elsewhere. Let me move this down a little bit. I'm going to do it like this because I'm sorry, I'm fiddling around with myself. That's what I get for doing this first. Okay, let's move that down. I actually think that minus sign really belongs over on the other side. You can see it's actually not attached to the X there. It's not up in the index. It's actually over on the other side. If I multiply through by that minus sign, that shows this. In fact, even the two belongs over there as well. So I'm going to write as minus one over two e to the x. So you can see here, that's better. What have I got? I've got that vertical shift that I saw before. Let's get rid of that orange highlighting because really it belongs over here. Um, there's going to be not a horizontal reflection, but a vertical reflection because that minus sign really is closer to the y than it is to the x. It's actually nothing to do with the index that you can see uh, over over here, you can see that X just kind of hangs out on its own. So therefore in orange now, I'm gonna write number one, there's a vertical reflection. And secondly, what effect does that um, division by two have? Well, there's going to be a, a stretch vertically as well. It's not just um, upside down, it's also going to be taller than it would have been otherwise, okay? So now that we're ready to do this, um, I'm gonna give you, I've, I've sort of worked you through how I, I think about this graph. Um, I'm gonna do it live with you, but I'll let you have a go yourself as well. Um, and I'll, we'll, we'll probably do, take me about two minutes to actually draw this on here, and then we'll have a look at my working together, and then you'll have a go at the exercise, okay? So off you go, I'm gonna stop talking for a second while I actually think about it, and then we'll compare notes at the end. This is what my graph looks like, okay? And um, in fact, maybe I should have done this before, but let's just quickly see what Desmos says and whether we get some agreement from that. So this is five minus, what did I say? It was two e to the x. Ta-da, there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. That's not bad. All right, so how did I come up with this? How did I know that this is what it was going to look like? Uh, let's step through my working a little bit, okay? Now it's a bit of a mess, so step through this one uh, one step at a time for me. I'm looking for the shape, intercept, asymptotes, uh, sorry, intercepts and asymptote, and then a point for scale if relevant, and I'll come back to the idea of if relevant in a second. So for starters, over here on the bottom left hand corner, I know it's really messy, but this is my shape. I wanna know roughly what's going to um, eventuate out of this curve. It's not going to be your stock scan standard exponential curve because of this uh, minus sign out the front, that vertical reflection that I saw before. So I know this thing's gonna look upside down. This of course is not what the actual graph is gonna look like. All the rest of the numbers interact with the graph and transform it in different ways. Um, but at least I know this is roughly what the shape is gonna look like, okay? so. Tick, I've got that, I'll keep it in the back of my mind. And then move on to the next feature, which is the intercepts, okay? So I let x equal zero to go ahead and find a y-intercept. I think most people were okay with that. But with what we had a look at earlier, the first example, the first example didn't have an x-intercept. How did I know that this one would? Now, the short answer is when I started, um, I wasn't 100% sure. Um, I have graphed a lot of these, so you sort of get more familiar with the overall shape. Um, but let me show you the two reasons how I knew to do this. Number one, have a look at my overall shape over here, okay? The overall shape is this downward looking exponential graph here, it's upside down. But then if you recall, when I was having a look at the equation here, I noticed there was a vertical shift and it's going to be a vertical shift five units upwards. Do you remember that? That minus five goes, uh, the axis is moving down, which means the graph is moving up relative to it. So that means if you think about this graph here, in fact, I can literally do it. If I take the axes here, watch closely if you're looking at your workbook right now. If I take these axes and I move them down five units, then you can see you're gonna get this uh, collision with, in fact, I don't need to move the horizontal axis, I just need to, sorry, the vertical axis. I just need to move this guy down and you can see when that moves five units, you get this second intercept appearing over here in the bottom right hand corner. So that was the first sort of intuition. And the second thing was, when I visualized what would happen, if instead of putting x equals zero, if I put y equals zero, you can fairly quickly see, even before you've worked out the numbers, that you will get a sensible value for x. You've got to pull out your logs to do it. Um, if this line here, if this transition, 
from, uh, what's this, line one, line two, if your transition from line three to line four is completely perplexing to you, then I would advise two things. Number one, go and revise your log laws. And number two, do ask your teacher for clarification for what's going on there because you're gonna have to find values like this a fair bit as you graph. Um, but that's how I worked out. Oh, there's a sensible um, X value that goes with this. So I can actually solve it. Y equals zero, X equals this guy down here. Um, the last piece of information that I needed before I actually started drawing was the asymptote. Um, I said there's been a vertical shift. Instead of having a horizontal asymptote at zero, I'm gonna have a horizontal asymptote at five because it's, it's moved up, okay? Now I said that was the last piece of information, the asymptote, even though I mentioned earlier on, right at the start, that we are supposed to have a point for scale. How is it that I can skip that? And the answer is, I already have a point for scale if I have an x-intercept, sorry, this is my x-intercept, and also a y-intercept. When you have a look, and here's my result now when I put it together. When you have a look at this graph, then it can't be any other graph than the one that I started with, uh, y equals five minus two e to the x. It can't be any other graph because number one, it can't be any taller or shorter. It can't be stretched out because that three locks you in vertically, but it also can't be anything wider because that log of five on two, which is by the way, if it's 0 0.9 if you're curious, roughly. Um, that means that it can't be any wider either. So unlike, say, you know, this first one that we started with, this guy, you have no idea how tall or short or how wide or how narrow it is because there are no numbers. Um, these numbers here, the y-intercept and the x-intercept, they tell you everything. So if you've got a pair of intercepts like that on both axes, then you're good to go. No more point for scale required. All the scale is on there. Last thing that is worth mentioning before I let you go on the exercises is please do make sure your scale is consistent. We said this before, but see how this is, whoopsie daisy, see how this y-intercept is three? Well, if I'm saying that the, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals five, then it had better make sense of my uh, vertical scale here. One, two, there's three, four, and then five, so it has to actually line up. If your five was way too high, or if it was too close to the three, um, then we're absolutely gonna say this is not an accurate representation of the graph, um, and yeah, you, you would not get full marks for that.